Hi everyone, uh, Peter here. Today's video will be SFF Spotlight episode 57. And just like always, we have about 20 topics to cover today. And you know, some comments have mentioned to me that there are so many special editions, special animated editions announced uh, in every SFF Spotlight. But well, I cannot help it. This is the state of the industry right now. There is really, for the past uh, year or two, there has been a surge of special animated editions. And that's why you see a lot of them in SFF Spotlight. And if you don't like uh, seeing them, you can just skip them. That's why I try to cover a lot of topics such as uh, cover reveals, new book news, new novelty release, special edition, and Kickstarter campaigns into one SFF Spotlight episode, into each SFF Spotlight episode. And I hope this episode continues to be beneficial to uh, every one of you watching it. And with that in mind, let's begin uh, today's episode of SFF Spotlight. Let's start from book news first. Uh, let's start from Sonitor updates. So Christopher Rocchio has mentioned that the title of the seventh and final book in the Sun Eater will be Shadows Upon Time. And I'm so excited to be uh, reading this one, of course, because this is coming in the year 2025 and I am in the middle of reading this Quiet Guts. I think I'm about 200 pages into this Quiet Guts right now. This Quiet Guts is the sixth and uh, penultimate installment in the Sun Eater series. And yeah, it is available now. If you haven't read the series, well, do it because it is absolutely incredible. And if you have read the series up to the fifth book, uh, The Asses of Men, well, the sixth book is out now. You can read it uh, immediately. And yeah, I'm having a great time reading this Quiet Guts as expected. And the next update on Sun Eater, this is regarding finally uh, a confirmation of the Broken Binding edition. And yeah, I have known about this for quite a while now. Ever since I read Empire of Silence, I've been convincing uh, the Broken Binding to make sure this edition will happen. And it is. It is happening. It has been confirmed. And as some of you uh, have predicted, I am an art director for this one. Together with Christopher Rocchio and also Mike, Mike Books Review, will be helping uh, as well. We are working on doing the illustrated end papers and also the board art, meaning the naked hardcover art. And honestly, I'm having such a great time brainstorming for ideas and also choosing scenes, details, and all that uh, together with Christopher Rocchio and convey them uh, to the artist. It's been fun and I cannot wait to show you all the results. I think what we have so far is already looking very promising. I have also received some questions about uh, whether that will be a reversible dust jacket or not. Well, I think this is still in the work, not 100% confirmed yet, but I think there is a good chance we can make reversible dust jacket happen as well. But yeah, uh, the one that has been confirmed, it is uh, board art, which is again, the naked hardcover art, and also illustrated and papers for each book. This project really came at the right time for me because as I said, I started reading Empire of Silence last se September or August. Plus I get to work with Christopher Rocchio as well and he is so good at this. He's clearly having fun directing for more artwork for his books as well. And yeah, that's pretty much the update for Sun Eater by Christopher Rocchio. I hope many of you are excited about this as well and I will try to uh, read through this quiet gods over the weekend and then maybe uh, release the review for Discord Gods next Friday, maybe. And moving on to the next one, this is for a new book being announced by Tor Books, and this is Angie Kills a King by Evan Lakeham. I think some of you might know Evan Lakeham from his Instagram or TikTok account or book talk. This is Book Review Kill. I think many of you will actually know Book Review Kill more than his name. And that's not a surprise because he, he has a lot of followers on Book Talk and also Bookstagram. And Angie Kills the King is his debut novel coming out in 2025. And he has signed on for a trilogy uh, published by Tor Books. And I would say congratulations. I think this is an impressive feat and I look forward to reading this book. Uh, next year. This breakneck fantasy adventure is supposedly suitable for fans of Nicholas Eames and Christopher Bullman, and it follows the unlikely assassin of a king as she attempts to escape the clutches of a legendary bounty hunter in a tale of grit, dark humor, inventive action, and surprising heart. The book, according to Evan, is inspired by Get from Utsi, Roland from Dark Tower, and Fitz from the Realm of the Elder Lynx. So yeah, the premise do sound interesting and I'm a fan of Nicholas Eames and also Christopher Bullman's books. And again, as I said, I look forward to reading this book uh, next year. And moving on to the next topic, the next three news are basically new book announcement together with the cover reveals. And I have the privilege and honor 
to reveal the cover art of the next two books. Uh, the first one is A Tide of Black Steel by Anthony Ryan, and this is a sequel series. The first book in a sequel series to the Covenant of Steel trilogy. And that book, uh, that series consists of the Pariah, uh, the Martyr, and also the Traitor. I have read only the Pariah, and I haven't read the remaining two books in the trilogy. But this one, A Tide of Black Steel, the cover art is done by Ben Pryor. And yeah, this one is a sequel to The Traitor, a sequel series. So if you are a fan of the Covenant of Steel trilogy, you don't actually have to wait long for this one because a title Black Steel is being released uh, this year. So yeah, I do have to catch up uh, to this one. I have read a lot of books by Anthony Ryan, but somehow I still haven't finished reading uh, The Covenant of Steel trilogy. But as far as I can tell from my own experience, I do think that The Pariah is a great book. If you have read The Covenant of Steel trilogy, do let me know what you think about the entire trilogy. Does it end on a satisfying ending? Because all I heard about it, about The Traitor, is that it ends on a very satisfying note. And the next one, I'm going to assume that this is the first time you're probably seeing this cover art here because I get the chance uh, to reveal it to my well, to all of you. And this is The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart. The cover art is once again uh, the same artist. Uh, it's done by the same artist who illustrated the Drowning Empire trilogy by Andrea Stewart as well. That trilogy, uh, it consists of the Boneshot Daughter, uh, the Boneshot Emperor, and also the Boneshot War. So the cover art behind The Gods Below is again illustrated by Sasha Vinogradova. And I think it looks stunning. This one will be released uh, this year. And this is a separate series. As far as I know, this is not related to the Drowning Empire trilogy. It is not related to the Boneshot Daughter, Emperor, and Boneshot War. Completely a new series uh, in a new world. And I look forward to reading this. I had a great time. Uh, reading the Drowning Empire trilogy, and I hope The Gods Below will be a better first book uh, compared to The Bone Shot Daughter, which I already consider as one of the most fun debut that I have ever read. It was so engaging, and I love the magic system in that trilogy. So I expect the same thing can be uh, can be experienced again from reading The Gods Below. And The Gods Below, the first book in the Hollow Covenant, will be released this year as well. I think it's in September. September 2024. And onward to the next one. This is for a self-published fantasy book. And this is a new book uh, together with a new cover reveal. This is for An Exile of Water and Gold by Josh Walker. The beautiful cover to this one is illustrated by Jeff Brown. I do think that Jeff Brown is really one of the masters when it comes to drawing a landscape art in epic fantasy, in epic fantasy and also sci-fi. He is so good at it. And this is another example. By the way, if you don't know, Jeff Brown is the one who did the recently, uh, I think released now, uh, Silver Blood Promise by James Logan, a book that I have read and reviewed uh, last year. The cover to the Silver Blood Promise is awesome. And well, An Exile of Water and Gold is beautiful as well. One of the things that I love about doing this cover reveal is how many people kind of relate this massive tree in the center of the cover to other books and also other games like from One Piece and also Final Fantasy IX and again uh, the Earth Tree from Elden Ring and yeah there is a lot of trees in uh, the epic fantasy genre. Cannot help it though Yggdrasil from Norse mythology is a huge inspiration for a lot of fantasy stories. But yeah this is a beautiful cover art and if you are a reader or a reviewer and you want to get an advanced reading copy of this one then I will make sure to leave the link to the advanced reading copy form in the description down below so you can read this book uh, early. We still have two more topics and then I will start talking about special edition and Kickstarter campaigns. And the next one is about the Scarlet Star trilogy by Ben Gelly. This is one of Ben Gelly's earliest fantasy trilogy. It is a Western fantasy series and it, it, I think it has been 10 years long since the release of the first book. So as a 10th anniversary project, the entire trilogy is getting a new cover art done by Rachel St. Clair and there will be interior illustrations by Dennis Korneff. If you have uh, got yourself a copy of The Written and also pretty much the Emanesca Illustrated Edition, well, Dennis Korneff is the one in charge of doing the interior artworks of the Emanesca Illustrated Edition. And yeah, I think he will be back to put more artwork into the Scarlet Star trilogy by Ben Gelly. Um, if Emanesca Illustrated Edition is any sign of quality, if it's the sign of quality, then I'm sure we can expect another beautiful set of illustrations coming from Dennis Korneff for Scarlet Star trilogy. And then finally, the last topic on the section of new book news, this is about Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. 
I think many of you will know already by now, Blood Over Bright Haven is getting a traditionally published edition from Del Rey book. And yeah, it is being released within this year as well. I think in the month of October. And the cover art is very different uh, compared to the uh, sub-published fantasy edition. Elvira Pauli Koska did the cover to this one. And if you have read this Dark Academia novel, you will understand why there is a typewriter at the front cover of Blood of a Bright Haven. And for me, well, I have read this book and I loved it very much. I hope this will make the name ML Wang more popular, even more than before, because she deserves it. She is a great storyteller. And Blood of Bright Haven, some have even considered that it's better than The Sword of Kaigen. Although, personally speaking, I still think that The Sword of Kaigen is better, but this is nonetheless another absolutely incredible standalone novel from the author. And Del Rey has also mentioned they will be publishing one more book uh, from M.L. Wang. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it is a standalone sequel to The Blood of Bright Haven, or maybe it is a completely new book in a new series, or maybe another standalone. But I will be excited uh, to read that one eventually. And now we are moving on to the topic of special editions. The first one that I want to spotlight today, this is for the page and week edition of Clitemnestra by Costanza Kazati. I haven't read this book yet, but I do love Greek mythology. I love Circe. I love also the Song of Achilles. And well, I will be reading this one for sure, whether I decide to get this copy or not. But this cover art, this design, all of them are handled by Neil Seagren. And I think it looks so beautiful. It looks even better than the standard hardcover edition, US or UK. So as far as cover art goes, this one is top notch. Loved it very much. And I hope the book will be as good or even better than the cover art. And you don't have to be subscribed to Pitch and Wake to get yourself a copy of Clitemnestra Pitch and Wake edition. This one will be available to the general. Uh, I think the general sale will take place on the 10th of May. So about a month from now. And the book will ship in the month of September 2024. And here is a recently revealed special edition from Harper Voyager. This is for Fire and Blood by George R. Barthe. This is the Deluxe Slipcase Edition. So I think this is just Fire and Blood in a more better hardcover edition along with the beautiful slipcase. Surprisingly, I really like uh, the design of the slipcase and hardcover air. It looks neat and it looks luxurious. So hopefully the materials will be high quality as well. There is also this collector edition coming. This will be released on the month of May together with the deluxe slipcase edition. But the collector edition, I think this will match uh, the anniversary, the 20th anniversary edition of a Game of Thrones, uh, Clash of Kings and a Storm of Swords. I can't believe it's been 20, more than 20 years already since the release of the Game of Thrones. But yeah, hopefully there will be more details about this one. I hope there will be more, maybe fully colored interior illustrations and all that, hopefully. And the last special edition I want to spot out today before we talk about a crowdfunding campaign, this is for Malice Grim Oak Press Edition. Malice by John Gwynn, uh, the first book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. And yeah, it is it is possible to pre-order this book now, assuming that it is still available by the time I post this video. Because more than 900 copies are sold now. Yeah, I think John Gwynn deserves it. Quite surreal for me to finally see this happening because I am a fan of The Faithful and the Fallen and I have mentioned this uh, to John Gwynn I think in 2017. I talk about this with him. If one day The Faithful and the Fallen do get a uh, fine press treatment, I will be buying it. And well, I am keeping my promise. I have been saving for this one. I have saved about $20 per month since last year to get myself a copy of Malice Grim Oak Press edition. And yeah, I'm going to get it. Cover art is by Marcus Winnie, the same artist who did the Bloodstone Saga cover art. And also there will be 11 interior illustrations by uh, Sam White. I think it will be a beautiful addition. I am happy that Dream Oak Press is going all out on this one because again, as I said, John Gwynn deserves all the success he gets. A great person and also a great storyteller. So that's it on the coverage of special edition. Now let's talk about Kickstarter campaigns. The first one that I want to spotlight, this is for The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, the deluxe hardcover edition published by Raidmark Creative. I love the cover art. It is done by Gerald Threat. And the interior illustrations will feature a comic art style handled by Paris Alain. There will be, I think, I think 10 interior illustrations, 10 black and white interior illustrations, and also 
uh, two fully colored and papers. So yeah, again, Red Mark is going all out on their deluxe hardcover edition. It will comes with acid uh, acid three paper, Smithson binding, and all that. And from what I have gathered, I think there's a good chance the interior illustrations, the comic art style, will have a mixed reception. But I do think that it is quite noteworthy to mention that it is interesting and also brave of Red Mark to still do something new with their special editions. But for cover art, I do love the cover art by Jarob Threat. I don't know uh, whether people love it or not, but I like it. I think it is awesome. <laughs> and the design is done by Sean T. King. And by the way, uh, speaking of Raidmark, Raidmark has revealed a teaser, a teaser image for their upcoming Sword of Kaigen hardcover edition. This will be a different edition compared to their previous uh, Sword of Kaigen hardcover edition. But I think these teaser images so far from Tom Gillison, they look so beautiful. I love Tom Gillison's artwork and I cannot wait to see the final result of this Raidmark hardcover edition. But we will see there will be more details coming for this edition uh, within this year. Let's move on to the next Kickstarter campaign. This one has been fully funded just like the Rage of Dragons and this is for Betrayal by AC Cobble, the fourth book in the War Hide series. And AC Cobble has mentioned that this War Heart series, originally six books long, is going to be five books long instead. So Betrayal is the fourth and the penultimate installment of the War Heart series. So that means it is about time I start reading this series. As you can see uh, on my bookshelves uh, behind me here, you can see uh, the first two books, Conspiracy and also Revenge. I really love the cover design to War Heart series. I think Daniel Kamarudin uh, artwork plus Sean taking mid design here they complement each other so well. And yeah, speaking of Daniel Kamarudin, this book will have interior illustrations by Daniel Kamarudin as well. So yeah, if you have read War Heights series, let me know what you think about it. And if you haven't uh, got yourself the chance to pledge uh, to this one, even though you own the first three books already, well, now you know it is available now. For the remaining two Kickstarter campaigns, these Kickstarter campaigns, they aren't live yet, but the Kickstarter page are available already. The first one is for a thousandly the first deluxe omnibus edition by Tao Wong. This will gather the first three books in the Thousand Li series into one deluxe hardcover edition. Well, I think this will be a beautiful edition. It will come with the golden uh, gilded edges and an acid-free paper, Smithson binding, and also cover art and interior art by, by Fleck Art Studios. And I think the Asian artwork here really fits the Thousand Li series. And yeah, I look forward to reading this progression fantasy series, uh, hopefully within next year, because I know uh, the series is coming to an ending uh, next year in 2025. But yeah, there will be more details about this Kickstarter campaign once it goes live, I think on the 15th of April. So yeah, not long from now. And finally, the last Kickstarter campaign, this will be to crowdfund a release of a book, Way of the Wizards by Michael Michel. This will be for the hardcover edition. And this is the premise behind the Way of Wizard. Even gods have their beginning. The first book in a new fast-paced epic fantasy series showcasing clever giants, savage unicorns, and tribes of treacherous wizards. What if Harry and Hermione had to kill Bronn if they wanted to be as powerful as Dumbledore? What if Voldemort ran Hogwarts and all the students were forced to live in the surrounding countryside, forming gangs and murdering each other? That's the premise for The Way of Wizard. And I haven't read anything by Michael Michel yet, but there's a really good chance I will start reading his debut novel, The Price of Power, within this year. Really soon, because I think uh, Michael Michel has mentioned that the second book is coming this year as well, and the series has so often been recommended to those who love reading uh, Joe Abercrombie's books. Uh, the First Law series. And as you can tell, I'm a huge diehard fan of The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie. So yeah, that's it on the topic of special editions and Kickstarter campaign. Now let's talk about uh, TV show first. The first one is about Night of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin. The casting for Dunk and Egg have been revealed and confirmed. Dunk will be played by Peter Claffey and Egg will be played by Dexter Saul Ansel. I don't actually know who Peter Claffey is, but I know that 
Dexter Sol Ansel is the child who played Snow. He played a young Snow in the ballad of Songbirds and Snakes movie. A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms is a really great book. I had a great time uh, reading about the relationship and the journey of Dunk and Egg in that book. And I look forward to the adaptation of this one, uh, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The H Knight. I think it will be released in the year 2025. But before that, we still have House of the Dragons to watch uh, this year soon actually i know what you're thinking right now though there are so many adaptations coming for the world of a song of ice and fire and that's not even the end but it has been confirmed that the Jon snow spin-off has been cancelled and i cannot deny i'm a bit delighted about this because there is no more story to tell here george martin hasn't even written uh, his own ending for his own series and i cannot believe they that they actually wanted to extend this series already after that ending in season 8 of game of thrones but kit harrington has confirmed in an interview with variety that it is not happening there is no story to tell and the Jon snow spin-off is not happening and let me know what you think about this news as i said i am happy about it <laughs> And finally, after the next topic, I will talk about some new noteworthy release. But this is about Jujutsu Kaisen. Apparently, according to Guinness World Record, Jujutsu Kaisen is the new most popular anime in the world, overtaking Attack on Titan after its ending. And yeah, Attack on Titan, I think since the year 2019 or 2020, has always been the most popular anime according to Guinness World Record. But yeah, the record has been shattered by Jujutsu Kaisen now. Not a surprise because Shingeki no Kyojin or Attack on Titan uh, has ended. So it's about time for a new series to take the spot. And I'm not surprised that it is Jujutsu Kaisen. The anime is incredibly popular and well received. And I look forward to watching season 3 of Jujutsu Kaisen. I do think that the anime is better than the manga. And some of you might be thinking right now, why is it not One Piece? And well, I'm also not surprised by this. One Piece anime has, I mean, it has done a lot of great jobs lately especially. But the pacing in my opinion is still all over the place and Jujutsu Kaisen as far as anime goes, is probably more popular than One Piece uh, right now. This is just the anime. The manga, I have no doubt that the manga uh, One Piece is still reigning as a king, deservedly. And finally, let's move on to the final section of today's episode. Let's talk about some noteworthy release. The first one will be about The Book That Broke the World by Mark Lawrence. This is the second book in the library trilogy. So it is the sequel to The Book That Wouldn't Burn. I haven't read that book yet, but I finally own that book, The Book That Wouldn't Burn. But uh, this is the sequel and it is out now. So if you have read the first book and you loved it, well, you can, you can order this one and read it as soon as possible. And on that note, if you have read every book by Mark Lawrence, including The Book That Wouldn't Burn, do let me know which one is your favorite. And then after that, we have Dark Kingdom by Wick Welker. This is the sequel novella to The Dark Theory, a great science fantasy novel with a lot of great ideas being implemented into a more accessible narrative. I'm really impressed. I was really impressed with what Wick Welker did for Dark Theory. I mean, there were, as I said, a lot of hard sci-fi ideas, but it was quite accessible somehow. I hope the sequel Dark Kingdom will be a great book again, just like Dark Theory. And finally, the last book, to spotlight today, the last noteworthy release. This is for The Eyes of Athen by Matt Larkins. This is the ninth and the final book in the Greek inspired uh, mythology fantasy series, The Tapestry of Fate. I haven't read anything by Matt Larkin yet, but I heard from so many readers now that if you love Norse mythology and also Greek mythology, you cannot go wrong with reading Matt Larkin's books. The Tapestry of Fate, in particular, is a Greek mythology series, but he also has the Ragnarok era series, which will focus on Norse mythology stuff. And yeah, The Eyes of Athens is the ninth and final book in the Tapestry of Fate series, and I look forward to reading the series for the first time eventually. I own the first two books already, so it's just a matter of deciding which one should I tackle first, uh, the Norse mythology or the Greek mythology. And yeah, I think that's the end of today's episode of SFF Spotlight. That's more than 20 topics. As, as always, I would like to hear your thoughts and comments regarding the news that I spotlighted today. Let me know which news excites you the most. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.